G'day guys. Look, have you got a Bosch 10P or 10H that's not looking too good, not even working, maybe leaking a little bit, you probably think the best way to get it fixed is to get someone out there, pull it out, chuck a new one in, and you know, you're gonna, you're gonna be laughing. But the thing is, sometimes these things aren't installed right in the first place, maybe 15, 20 years ago, whenever they were. And I'll explain to you why that's a bit of an issue. G'day, I'm Ben from Beautiful Plumbing. Look, it's always the, the cheapest way is just to go on the internet, look for something exactly the same, choose a plumber, lock him down at a price, get him to come and change it over and, and sort it out. But ha have a look at this one, I'll show you what I mean. Like this is in really, really bad condition, okay? Um, it's leaking here, dropping, you see, I can't, w wouldn't, there's no way that I could get that, um, even the diaphragm out of, out of this thing. But, okay, so I could put a new heater on, but the trouble is, if you look at the gas main, check out this gas main here. It's this middle pipe, it's the smallest pipe, and it goes up here, then it goes up into the larger pipe, and that's like nearly 25 metres away from the gas meter box. And on the pipe sizing charts, it's only really able to supply like 57 megajoules, where this heater alone is about 89 megajoules. Plus I've got a bayonet, which is another 25 megajoules, plus a, a stove as well, which is probably another 40. So it's massively undersized. So all these years this thing's been working, it hasn't been working to its peak performance. And he's never gonna know. If you've locked a plumber in, on a price, he's come, changed it over, because he thinks like for like, it, it should work, right? Now, if it's not working as peak performance and he can't get that burner pressure um, right, do you think he's gonna let you know? The only way you're gonna really find out, if he doesn't tell you, because he's gotta have this awkward conversation, said, oh, I've gotta enlarge the gas pipe, which is gonna cost a lot more money, okay? If he doesn't wanna have, have that conversation with you, the only way you'll find out is if, we're, if one of the gas inspectors come over and audit his job and check it, and if it can't get it, then what happens, they send him a you know, a notice of defect saying you've installed it, you're the professional, and you haven't, the pipe sizing isn't correct. You should have told the customer that, okay? So you could be stuck with a heater for the next 10 years. That still is never working until it's peak performance, you know? These things like to run, they like to the hot water, they you know, like to heat water, that's what they do. Okay, so the customer's called us, we've come out, had a look at it, it's leaking, probably not worth spending any money on this. We said, don't worry about spending money on it, but let's rethink the whole thing. Also, look at the pipe sizing charts, you know, look at the pipe sizing it's not gonna work efficiently anyway, okay? So you don't wanna be doing that sort of stuff. I said, hey, let's take a step back, let's think about it and, and think about something that, you know, because whatever you choose, you're gonna be stuck with for the next 10 years. And if you get, you put exactly the same thing in here and the gas fitter doesn't test it or anything like that or, you know, measure the, you know, the, the burner pressure, you're gonna be stuck with the stuff that's not, not working correctly and you're never gonna know about it. So I said to him, look, it's undersized, let's, and also, look at the position. Like, we've got a whole bedroom, and then we've got the bathroom over here. Then we've got the laundry, and the kitchen's just on the other side of that wall there, right? So I said, how about we stick the hot water system right here, okay, which is super close to the kitchen, which is gonna be great. Run a new line up, 25 mil, make it the correct size, all the way over to the meter box, and hook it up, and get it all sorted. You know, put something like a Renine, which flows a lot better, and Yep, now, it was a lot more than he expected to pay, you know, than, than what he was quoted on the internet and stuff, but he's gonna get something that's gonna work correctly and it's gonna really future-proof it. Now, this exact same situation happened to me a couple of weeks ago from a bloke in Chewett Hill that gave me a call. G'day, Corey, if you're watching. You're probably not. But he, um, same deal. His hot water system was leaking. I said, it's not worth fixing it. It's rusting out the bottom. Terrible condition. I said, also, it's undersized. Spent nearly an hour there measuring up pulling off roof tiles, checking out where everything is. Said, oh, we could be able to move it near the kitchen, that'd be better, or rah, rah, rah. He said he just wanted the minimum, you know, minimum done, blah, blah, blah. I said, okay, well, maybe just get one of the guys on the internet who just got to, you know, swap them over, that's all they do. Maybe get one of them if that's the cheapest thing you're doing. But I can't put it in because if it is undersized and I can't get that burner pressure right, then I get a defect notice and I'm not willing to, you know, wear that. As plumbers, we sign off on all our work, okay? So, anyway. No worries, left him, he paid his he paid his 66 bucks or whatever, call out fee, you know, up, you know I carved two hours out of my day, right? Next uh, couple of days later, I get an email from him, right? And he, what had happened, he was, he was disappointed that what I didn't do is come out there, because he read in the troubleshooting guide that it said no hot water, failed to ignite, could have been the gas lockout. So the solution was to turn the taps on and off and then turn it, you know, try it again. And he did that and the thing lit and started working again, even though it was dripping down the bottom and stuff, right? But he missed the main point, that it failed to ignite. Hot water systems are mean, meant to ignite, okay? So he's missed that whole point. He thinks just by me, just by turning it on and off, 
that fixed the problem, but it didn't. And so he was paying out of me that I didn't know that and rah, 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 so anyway, you get him, not, my, not the type of guy I want to work for anyway. So this guy was happy to do it and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll show you when we're all done and, and sorted and have it all up and running for the catcher. All right, here it is. Put the Rinai 16 in. So this has got like 125 megajoules. We've got a you know, new cold main going in, hot main up. We, we try and put it into the cavity. So you don't, there's already enough pipes on this outside wall anyway. So we try and hide it in the cavity. That's all connected up. Um, the gas main goes up. We still have to clip it a bit first. Uh, and that, as soon as it gets inside the roof there, jumps up to 25 mil, goes all the way across to the meter now. It's a shorter run. It's a maybe three meter run to the kitchen now, a meter to the laundry and maybe four meters to the bathroom. So a lot better location. He's going to be stoked with it. Um, I told him when he has a shower tonight, make sure you have, you're holding a Zimmer frame because the difference, the, the pounding of the water from these things compared to the old uh, Bosch uh, Hydros or the Bosch Pilots, it's going to be a huge difference. So, um, yeah, make sure you get your pipe sizing right. That's the most important thing, guys. And uh, anyway, thanks for watching and I'll catch you later.